I am often asked, what is the best vintage sewing machine to buy? And that is a very difficult question to answer because it is very subjective. There are things to consider when buying a sewing machine um, that are important across the board. And the first thing I would say that is super important is your stitch quality. Uh, a lot of beginner sewers in particular overlooked um, stitch quality when they were looking for a sewing machine. The only thing they were really looking for was something that was sturdy. Um, I would say stitch quality is extremely important, especially when you are looking to get into quilting or something of that nature where the stitches are front and center. The next thing to consider would be speed. Uh, there's not a lot of time to do much. That's why you don't want a sewing machine that is slow. I would say a thousand stitches per minute is a comfortable speed. However, there are some sewing machines out there that go about 800 or 850 that are okay for most uh, standard sewing jobs. The third thing I would say that is important are presser feet and presser feet variety because they allow you to do a variety of different things with your sewing machine that you would not be able to do otherwise. Um, some sewing machines come with snap-on presser feet, but I really do not like snap-on presser feet because uh, they wiggle. Um, and I like a sturdy uh, presser foot that is uh, has the stem attached to the foot itself because it just seems to work a lot better. And that is something to look out for when you are searching for a vintage sewing machine or really any sewing machine at all. Now there are certain things that are specific to vintage sewing machines that you will want to look out for before take, taking the plunge to purchase uh, one of the older machines. The first thing I would say to look out for is whether or not you can buy replacement parts. Many vintage sewing machines do need replacement parts when you buy them. Um, Singer is usually the easiest uh, sewing machine to get replacement parts for because uh, they are so plenteous and so many of them out there in the wild and also so many aftermarket manufacturers who make uh, aftermarket parts for Singer. The secondary uh, machine that is going to be somewhat easy to find parts for are Kenmore sewing machines because uh, most well, a lot of Kenmore sewing machines were made in Japan and they just use standard uh, parts and they're pretty easy to find. Last but not least, I would say your Japanese made machines. Uh, I would say they're called Singer Class 15 uh, Japanese machines. Uh, they come in a variety of off-brand names, but they all take Singer parts. Uh, the only issue with this is that uh, it is a toss-up as to which Singer Class 15 parts that they may take. So sometimes you might have to buy a part and try it out to see if it works. And then if it doesn't work, switch it out for another part. Uh, that's not a problem for some people, but it's a problem for me. Uh, I have an Indeco JA21 that was my first sewing machine that I ever had. Uh, there were many parts that I had to... Uh, swap out and see what will work for the machine even though the machine does take stand standard Singer uh, sewing machine parts. Next I would like to say that you should look for a vintage sewing machine that has all metal or almost all metal gears. Uh, this is where we get into a bit of controversy because um, any machine that was made by Kenmore after 1977 has all uh, but gone to plastic parts and plastic parts are something that wear out over time and must be replaced and when the plastic gears in a machine wear out that is usually when the person just discards the sewing machine is trash uh, however there are many videos and things online of where people have reproduced uh, the plastic gears um, to make the sewing machine run like brand new again and it can be done but it's a pain in behind to do so most people just do not want to do it you would be surprised by some of the machines that do have plastic gears inside two of the most popular singer sewing machines uh, in the vintage world are the singer 301a and 401a both of those have one single uh, plastic gear inside uh, the rest of the machine is all metal and they are true workhorses and many people uh, seek those machines even though they have the one plastic gear. Uh, the one plastic gear can be replaced and it's often replaced in those machines. 
Uh, so when you are in the market for a vintage sewing machine, please do your research on the machine to see what degree of uh, plastic parts are inside or if there are any at all. Um, it's best to not have any at all, but if you have one or two, it's usually fine. Now we get to bobbins. Um, I particularly do not like to purchase sewing machines that have bobbins that are not common. Singer Class 15 bobbins are the most easiest to find because you can go to any Walmart or any other store really and get bobbins for those machines. And also like a Singer 66, you can easily get uh, bobbins for that machine as well. But when it comes to uh, working with something like a Singer Touch and Sew, those bobbins must be ordered online and they're pretty hard to come by and they're also pretty small. Um, so those are machines to kind of avoid if you are like me and like uh, being able to go to the store and just pick up what you need. Now I'm going to tell you which sewing machines I picked for various sewing tasks and why I picked those machines. Uh, first up is garment making. I am a garment maker and that's the number one reason why I sew. If I were to have to pick out a vintage sewing machine, I would most likely pick up a 401A for that task. And the reason why I picked up, I would pick up that machine is because of all of the wonderful features that are on that machine. It is a direct drive machine, meaning that it doesn't take a belt. Uh, so that means that you don't lose torque when you are sewing on the sewing machine. And it, it really sews beautifully. Um, and then also it has a needle plate that lifts up, which is kind of cool because on most sewing machines, the feed dogs drop so that you can quilt or embroider. But on this particular machine, the needle plate actually lifts up, which is a very thoughtful idea. Um, I know that this machine I've picked for uh, garment making, but uh, you do need to drop your feed dogs if you are uh, doing a buttonhole and that's just something that is great to me and it has a, a great zigzag and straight stitch as well plus it has the slant shank so you can easily see where your needle is when you're sewing um, it's just lovely features on that machine now me personally I own the Kenmore uh, 1941 it is a great machine it has a removable bed that is for easy travel uh, and it's a super high shank that makes it easy to get underneath uh, get fabric underneath that uh, presser foot um, I really like the machine because it has um, stretched it stretch stitches and standard stitches the stretch stitches allow you to sew uh, jersey knits easily um, and that's one of the main reasons why I love this particular sewing machine and then also you can switch out your needle plates uh, from a zigzag needle plate to a straight stitch needle plate so that you can um, sew thin materials with a straight stitch without having to worry about the um, fabric getting sucked down into the needle plate um, last but not least that machine is really easy to work on so I would definitely pick it as a number one pick Second in the list of Kenmore's, I have listed the uh, 1050, and it is the three four size portable sewing machine. It weighs a little more than a Singer Featherweight uh, at about 17 pounds. However, it has two times the uh, power of a Singer Featherweight because it um, has a 0.8 amp motor instead of the 0.4 amp motor on the uh, featherweight. And then two, it has multiple stitches on it instead of just a straight stitch. So you can do some um, garment making on the machine and it's pretty powerful. And I just love that particular model of uh, machine. In terms of Bernina, I would say that the Bernina 1010 is a top pick for garment making because it has that free arm on it. That's really nice. And it also has great uh, presser feet uh, that are really solid and just uh, well, very well made. Um, the machine really stitches through denim materials and any garment materials with ease. I've never had a problem out of that machine. Uh, I also would pick the Bernina 930. The Bernina 930 is considered uh, one of, if not the best uh, Bernina that was ever made. Uh, it has a lot of power 
and a lot of great features for uh, anyone who would make garments. And I've never run across anybody who has said, okay, I didn't like the Bernina 930, so let me trade it in. Um, most people love that machine and have that as a forever machine. So that's why I put that on the list as something highly recommended. Now let's talk about the quilting category. In the quilting category, I chose Singer 201 first because it has a beautiful straight stitch and a nice wide harp space for quilting. Um, if you are able to get your hands on a 201-2, that is great because that particular machine is a direct drive machine that does not have to have a belt, which means that you get a little bit more torque than you would with some of the other models. But if you do come across one of the other models, that is great as well. Uh, the next machine in the line of the quilting specific machines that I chose was a Singer 15. The Singer 15 is just a beautiful machine that also has a great straight stitch. Uh, but what sets it apart from the Singer 66 is that it has a side loading bobbin and that side loading bobbin is great because you can keep your quilt underneath the machine while you change out a bobbin underneath instead of having to remove the quilt from the entire machine and then open the bobbin case to change out the bobbin. I also picked the Singer Featherweight. Now the Singer Featherweight is a compact miniature size machine that is great for piecing. Uh, it's not one of my personal favorites. It looks nice, but it's not one of my personal favorites simply because uh, it doesn't have as much strength. It only has a 0.4 amp motor. Uh, however, it is very lightweight, weighing in at just 11 pounds, which is why uh, many tout this as a favorite. Uh, the last machine that I picked in the quilting category is the Singer. 301A. The Singer 301A is a great um, machine to have because it's like the big sister of the Singer Featherweight. It has a little bit more power and um, it just makes a beautiful straight stitch. Now let's talk about vintage embroidery machines. There are a number of vintage machines that would work great for doing embroidery. Many of the machines that are mentioned in the garment making category would also work for embroidery. Um, specifically, the Singer 401A is great for doing embroidery because it takes design cams, uh, which are used for making decorative stitches. In addition to this machine, I chose the Kenmore 1914. The Kenmore 1914 is a great option because it includes a monogramming kit uh, that many embroiderers still use today. Moving on, I would like to discuss bag making specific machines. Now this is sort of a controversial topic because uh, many bag makers would like to use a domestic sewing machine for bag making. However, I do not believe that domestic sewing machines are suitable for bag making. While most vintage sewing machines will sew through thick materials, it doesn't mean that they are meant to be uh, used with thick materials at all times. I once had a Singer 66 that I uh, upgraded to have a one amp motor so that I could sew bags, but the machine would sew through vinyl or leather. However, it was not something that uh, I wanted to put the machine through at all times simply because it did not do an awesome job of stitching through those materials at all times. It was like I had to fight with the machine to get it to do some of the things that I wanted to do. Though it would sew through it, it just wasn't a comfortable sew. So for that reason, I have only picked industrial machines. And I know industrial machines take up more space, but at the end of the day, they are just so much easier to work with when it comes to bag making. The first machine that I picked was the Singer uh, 111W155. That machine, um, is favored amongst leather workers in particular because of its strength and it has the walking foot. Uh, also, you can upgrade the motors on the machine. It has a much larger mo motor than what you would find on a vintage sewing machine that is just a domestic. Uh, the next machine in the line I picked was the Singer 78-3. The Singer 78-3 is a wonderful machine to use for bag making. Uh, here is the description of the machine. 
Uh, it is especially fitted for stitching lightweight awnings, automobile tops, curtains, upholstery, trim, and other lightweight work in imitation leather. It is also successfully used for plain stitching in fabrics where the advantage of a combined needle and upper feeding mechanism is desired. Uh, now I also picked another machine from the 78 lineup and that is the 78-1. Now that machine um, has a little bit less power than the uh, 78-3. However, it is still a good machine for uh, a bag maker. Um, for its description, it says, it is intended for use on lightweight work in fabrics only. It is especially adopted for stitching lightweight awnings, carriage trimmings, and many other articles where the advantage of a combined needle and upper feeding mechanism is desired. In addition to plain stitching, the machine is also extensively used for binding, cording, welting, hemming, and braiding. Well, these are the sewing machines that I added to the list. However, I know that there are many other vintage sewing machines out there that would qualify for being on the best vintage sewing machines list. If you know of any of those machines, please put them in the comment section. I have my official list at my website and a link to that is in the comment section below. Uh, I will be periodically updating that. So please check back to see what I have added to the list. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing-related content. Peace.